20 minutes after 7 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this uh, 18th day of December. December 18th, 2014. You're one week away from Christmas, kids. Where's Rob? Where's Rob? So exciting. So very exciting. 41 degrees here at the studios of The Source, WOCA, broadcasting live from the paddock mall just outside the WOCA commissary. Yep. Somebody called us that the other day from one of those kiosks when we walked by. What happened now? Somebody from one of those kiosks yeah. called it the commissary <laughs> the other day when we walked by. I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, uh, good morning, Robin. How are you? Good, good, good. Good morning, Larry. How good, are you? Good. Got a good show for us this morning. 7.35. It's Thursday, so I'll try to do something serious in that segment. Tomorrow I'll be fun. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, so the serious topic is, uh, gosh, there's a few things out there, I guess. But the thing everybody's talking about is the um, the changes in our relationships with uh, Cuba. Oh, okay. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? If you are from Cuba or know people from Cuba, I would love to hear what you have to say about this. Um, did we help the Cuban people? Uh, by the the uh, statements that were made yesterday, by the changes that were made yesterday, so we'll we'll do all that. Didn't see it coming though. That's one thing. I think a lot of people are saying, "I didn't see that coming." Yeah. Just out of, out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. The, the good news is the 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 man who was incarcerated down there is out. The American who shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah. After what five years? Yeah. I know, Gee. I know, crazy. But anyway, anyway, so five that's years. Seven thirty-five. Let's talk about that. I'd love to hear what you all have to say about it. Uh, eighth, and I have opinions from uh, elected officials. I've got Bill Nelson's opinion, Marco Rubio's opinion, Governor Scott's opinion, nice. even Pope uh, Francis's opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I'll tell you what they say. Nice. And then you can chime in too. 8.35, we'll read the news. That is one of the news bites, but we have usually between 20 and 25 stories that we're able to squeeze in in that 25-minute segment, and we call it News Bites for that very reason. We uh, shorten the news stories and and deliver them that way. Today's Thursday. Hank Whittier will be here with his veterans. The show is called Veterans News, and Hank is the executive director of Vets Helping Vets. Love those guys. Love that show, and uh, you're playing with a Barbie doll. <laughs> yeah, it's a sparkle girl. <laughs> this is so cool. Chad and Wendy came in yesterday. They brought in three uh, toys for boys. They're cars that make noise. I love those. And then three sparkle girls for... Oh, no, four. Four just, girls just, and four boys. I know. So. Hold on to... Just, sorry. All right. Well, we'll slip that in right now. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I love playing with we the toys. We have toys here in the studio. <laughs> those toys will not be in here after 11.30 tomorrow. That's right. Because uh, that's when Jerry... What's her last name? Girth. Girth from uh, children or kids helping kids. Mm-hmm. Florida kids helping kids will be taking all of these toys out of the studio and yeah. delivering them to children who might not otherwise have a Christmas holiday. And it's not too late to bring in toys. We are getting a lot of toys at the last minute, as a matter of fact, which yeah. is awesome. If you see, if you can see the camera behind Robin. I see on the camera behind Rob lots of toys, and you were just playing with a Barbie doll. And and now here's the <laughs> adventure wheels. I love this. Oh, some boy is. You see, think about think <laughs> about, think about this toys. right now. You're having fun with that right now. Yeah. And you'll probably have fun with it just for that. That was it for you. <laughs> One week from right now, some little boy is going to be on the carpet on the floor in his house with that car. <laughs> yeah. And it is. Ju- I mean, with the truck, it's just going to make his day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what I love about this. That's what I love about this. And I know we don't do toys all year long. No. But we do help out with different drives all year long. Yes, not, we not do. Toys. This is the only time of year we do toys. Yeah. So Other times we anyway, do everything else. So that, I didn't tell you the whole day yet. So Sorry. did I tell you Sydney Show Walter's <laughs> coming on? He's, now you did. He's yes. an active bachelor. He's coming on at 935. <laughs> he's written a book called The Single Man's House Cleaning Playbook. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am a single man. Yes, you are. And you've seen my house cleaning skills. Yep. The very poor. <laughs> I get an F minus. Uh, 10.05, I do have uh, Christmas from the 1970s. Let's see, we did the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. Today we're doing Christmas from the 70s. And because I lived in the 70s and was, was an adult already by the 70s, pretty uh-huh. much. Yeah. I didn't think it would be fun to look back on because I was thinking, well, that seems like yesterday. But no, no, no. It's a fun year. It's a fun decade to look back on. So we'll do that just for 10 minutes at 10.05. Uh, Carly Knobloch is coming on at 10.20. Carly is a lifestyle uh, expert. She contributes to CNN. A lifestyle expert. Mm-hmm. 
A lifestyle. How do, you, how do you become a lifestyle expert? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I guess just live and breathe. <laughs> she's a, ho- a host on Home and Garden TV, mm-hmm. which uh, they give away a, a house every year, don't they? Yeah, they do. I'm waiting for the next chance. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to tell you how to be in the know about mm-hmm. the newest must-give gadgets. Okay, it's not too late to still buy a gift for somebody. No, no. The most of the hottest holiday technology. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. What do I have here? I had something else here I wanted to share with you. Okay. Um, uh, 1050, Dr. Stephen Sharp is coming on. He's a licensed clinical professional counselor. Mm-hmm. His uh, topic is how to manage common mental health issues. <laughs> <laughs> During the holiday season. Yeah, I need help. <laughs> How to manage common mental... I wonder what they are. Yeah. What's a common mental health issue? Well, stress and, an- and anxiety. I mean, is there a mental illness equivalent to the cold? <laughs> I mean, is, is and there, anxiety. I, I, honestly, I just got a little... I just got a little... Uh, whatever you would call it. I just got a little mental illness. It's just bear with me while I get through it. Oh, there you go. It, it takes 12 days. I'm usually over in 12 days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ocala Health and Strive they're going to uh, our friends from uh, Ocala Health and Strive Physical Rehabilitation Leah is it Leah coming? Leah Leah yes. Caruso is coming in today with the guest who's going to tell us how to sit up and st- fix our posture that's right exactly you right. have to pay attention because I don't do a good job uh, yesterday on Fun with Joe I uh, gave you guys a scenario you and Joe the, mm-hmm. the scenario was Santa Claus gave you his old one of his old sleighs because he needed help yeah, that was fun. And you went from country to country to country. Well, Santa Claus was watching you and Joe. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm going to tell you, he was blaming himself for your inability to get through the world quicker. Oh, You have yeah. to be quick if you're going to deliver toys in one night, you know. At least we were going in the right direction. So, <laughs> well, see, part of the problem is when, when Santa Claus started, there were much fewer children. And if, yeah. And see, now there's like 7 billion people on the planet or something. So there's a lot more children. So it needs a lot more help. So he, he started realizing, well, gosh, you guys don't really know Africa. You don't really know Asia, you know. So he said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to put Listeners I'm going to ask Robin and Joe, instead of doing it that way, mm-hmm. let me just put him in an airplane. <laughs> First of all, a sled is hard to drive. Confined. You, no, no, this was an airplane. Okay. And it's going to keep you in the United States because you know uh-huh. the United States. Okay? So what he has given you, so you know where to go, are yeah. the codes for the airports. Oh, okay. The codes for the airports. So I will tell you the code. Okay. I will tell you the state. You just tell me the city that that code refers to. Oh, my to. gosh. Codes of the airports. That's how you know where to go in your new way to deliver yeah. gifts around the country this time, not the world, just the country. <laughs> Santa will be kicking back with his uh, refreshment. He's got a lot to do. And his cookies, and he's going to be listening. Do you know, when, when Santa Claus was first uh, on the job, when he first got the job, mm-hmm. uh, there were only like 28 Christian children, so it was real easy. <laughs> said, how did Santa Claus get to all the children? When, well, the, when it started... Mm-hmm. There was only 28 Christian children. Yeah, and they were like in one area. And no offense to the other children, but it was pretty much a club, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was it was the Christian club, <laughs> the, the Christmas club, and the, et cetera. So, yeah. so he had an easy job. He was a young man. Yes. And I think he was like 14 or something. Yeah. <laughs> he, just, he didn't even have a beard yet. No, he, 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 he didn't he even a, have stubble. He had to put a fake one on. Yeah. So. <laughs> And he was he, he would fit down that chimney really easy. Yeah. <laughs> 28 children, no problem. Now he's got millions, and, and they're all over the world now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Those Christians just keep repopulating, Robin. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> they just That's keep following fun. that rule. Be fruitful and multiply. Yep, it's fun. All right, when we come back, um, let's talk about Cuba. Okay. Cuba. I just want to go to Cuba. Somebody said if you go to Cuba, it's like going back in time because all the cars are old. Have you ever heard that? I've heard that, yeah. I would love to do that, too. All right. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. 
Fox News Radio. I'm Steve Rappaport. Not coming to a theater near you. Sony Pictures Entertainment said in a statement that in light of the decision by the majority of its exhibitors not to show the movie The Interview, the company is calling off its planned Christmas Day release. Hackers attacked Sony in the last few weeks. In its most recent emails, threatened violence for showing the film depicting the assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Fox Radio's Michelle Polino, U.S. officials blame North Korea for the cyber attack. Changing course with Cuba. Today, the United States wants to be a partner in making the lives of ordinary Cubans a little bit easier. President Obama signaling a major thaw with the Cold War foe, plans to establish an embassy in Havana, and urging Congress to lift the half-century-old trade embargo. Fox Radio's Jared Halpern. Curtain call for Stephen Colbert. The Colbert Report comes to an end tonight. He takes over for David Letterman next year. Fox News. We report. You decide. Fox News Early Prime, breaking down business news and its impact on your bottom line. Your world with Neil Cavuto. That's how I do business. That's why I am business. Bold positions and brash opinions on the topics America is buzzing about. The buy. How do you think this will set in with the American people? This will be the pulse of the nation. Washington insight and political know-how from the best in the Beltway. Special report with Brett Bay. The epicenter of the political world is here. The number one place for fair and balanced coverage. Fox News Channel. What's wrong with working hard to make our lives and our kids' lives better. Nothing. At Fox Business, we don't have a problem with success. We have a very big problem with those who get in the way of it. We don't come out of the box bashing those who make money. Just the politicians stealing it and the bureaucracies wasting it. We're not just sitting behind a desk. We're out in the field, on the floor, with the folks. Because when a story moves forward, so do we. Fox Business, the power to prosper. Check your local listings. Let's face it, nowadays it can be hard to find American-made products, and that's something that Cabinet Sales of North Florida is well aware of. That's why they're an authorized dealer of well-born cabinetry, family-owned and American-made since 1961. Cabinet Sales of North Florida is your answer for complete turnkey kitchen remodels and whole house cabinetry. Their cabinets are finished with solvent-based enamels for a long-lasting finish that's second to none. Available in an incredible selection of door styles and colors to choose from to turn your dream kitchen into a reality. In-house design and drawing services are available. Come by and see our displays for yourself at the Floors of the Villages, 3935 County Road 216 in Oxford or Exquisite Design Kitchen and Bath in Bellevue, right across the street from the Bellevue Library. So whether you're looking for bookcases, kitchen, bath, or outdoor kitchen, Cabinet Sales of North Florida is your one-stop source of quality cabinets. For a free estimate, call 352-427-2647. That's 352-427-2647. Cabinet Sales of North Florida. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Now is the time to go to your local Kubota dealer where you can get a great deal on a new Kubota RTV during Kubota's Gear Up and Go sales event. Thinking about a new utility vehicle? Why not choose the top-selling diesels in the U.S. for the past 10 years? The flagship Kubota RTV X1100 combines styling with features like a premium all-weather grand cab, extra-duty independent rear suspension, and power steering. Right now, get your own Kubota RTV X series for zero down and 0% finance for up to 48 months. So for a great deal, think orange at the Kubota Gear Up and Go sales event. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to KubotaDealersOfFlorida.com. Zero down, 0% APR financing for terms up to 48 months on selected equipment now through December 31st, 2014. Not available for rental national accounts or government customers. 0% APR low rate financing not available with instant rebate offers. Financing available through Kubota Credit Corporation USA subject to credit approval. Other exceptions may apply. For more information, call toll free 1-888-465-8268. When I started thinking about this year's Christmas greeting, I wanted to make it something meaningful. So here is my heartfelt wish for us all. Good health, prosperity, and the peace to be happy, whatever our circumstances. Remember the reason for the season. Merry Christmas. W-O-C-A. 1370 WOCA. 
All right, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Robin, it is 41 degrees out there. Oh, yay. 41 degrees. It One week from today's pretty. Christmas. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, we are collecting toys. And mm-hmm. if you would like to help us out, you can bring in an unwrapped toy. It doesn't have to be brand new, but that would be nice, too. We had some new gifts yesterday brought in. Yeah. Uh, and, and so these toys will all be distributed a week from well, t- tomorrow, actually. Uh, yes. the, the lady in charge, her name is... Jerry Girth, thank you. Uh-huh. She'll be here as a guest at eleven o'clock, and then after she's done interviewing, uh, being interviewed by us, she will take all of these toys. I hope she has a truck. Yeah. And she will deliver them, I guess, to the children. I guess somebody in her agency, which is called Florida Kids Helping Kids. Yep. They will find the homes that need these toys, and uh, one week from today. Those children will wake up and be very, very happy to see these toys. Yeah, very happy. Makes you, makes you feel really good. Thank you, everybody, yeah. who, for contributing. At this point, there's too many people to thank, so <laughs> just thank you all. Thank you all. Yes. Have you heard of chikungunya? No. Chikungunya. <laughs> no clue what that is. C-H-I-K-U-N-G-U-N-Y-A. Uh-huh. Okay, I, I wrote I do, it down. I do have the pronunciation. Okay. It's got nothing to do with chickens. Oh. But it's chikungunya. Okay. I am not making it up, and I am not saying it wrong. I do have the pronunciation guide. Okay. It means bending over in pain. Chikungunya. Really? Are you ready? This is a word you will know, really. I'm telling it to you for the first time, for you. Now, somebody out there might have heard of it. Yeah, I have not. (laughs) It is a mosquito-borne virus. Chikungunya. Oh, my gosh. It has no vaccine. (gasps) Oh, no. And there is no treatment. And the name means bending over in pain because that's what you will do. Oh, my gosh. If you get bit by a mosquito carrying chikungunya, Uh you can't prevent it with the vaccine. You can't be treated for it once you get it. You just got to let it run its course. Oh, my gosh. And you will bend over in pain. How scary is this? That is so scary. It causes intense joint pain and inflammation. Oh, my gosh. I am going to sell right now. I don't have any. I'm not selling it to you from me. I'm just saying I'm going to send you all out to the convenience stores or no, the, the pharmacies, I should say, mm-hmm. to get what do they call it? Insect repellent. Oh, there you go. I'm going to tell you something right now that will make you all say, I got to get some insect repellent. Uh-huh. Right now, it's too cold to worry about it, right? 41 degrees. Mosquitoes no aren't out there right now, right? I don't I don't know. I've seen one. Really? Okay. Well, yeah, when I never take mind my, then. the dog down to the big This thing. chikungunya is originally from uh-huh. Asia and Africa. It has been kicking around the Americas for a couple of years and can now be found in the United States. There have been 11 confirmed cases of chikungunya infection this year oh, in no. the United States. Guess where all 11 of them are? Here in Florida. In Florida. Ah. Oh. Gee. I just sold a whole load of yep. insect repellent, didn't I? It's a good I? stocking stuffer. <clears throat> there you go. It's There's nothing list. to stop it from spreading, so get used to hearing about it and carry plenty of mosquito repellent. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. Chicken Ugh. gunya. Wow. <laughs> I think I cri- killed one the other day. Good. A mosquito. Why did God... See, this is... Yeah. When I go to... They say when you die, you get to ask God questions, right? Uh-huh. You think you do? I think so. Excuse I me, think... be- before you uh, judge me, can I ask you a question? <laughs> no, no questions. <laughs> Why, yes, sir, I'll just behave. <laughs> but I want to know about the mosquitoes. Is there a real reason for this? <laughs> He'll tell you the answer before you ask your question, because he hears you right now. So. That's what they say. Yeah. That's what they say. All right, let's talk about Cuba. Okay. Um. Yesterday, Republicans... Republicans broadly slammed President Obama's plan to resume diplomatic relations with Cuba after more than five decades, charging that it is yet another example of an inept foreign policy, Mm -hmm. especially since it said nothing about the Castro's regime's longstanding human rights abuse. Mm -hmm. Here's a statement from Florida Representative Ileana Ross Letinen in an interview on CNN. The Cuban people are no freer today than they were the first day of the Cuban regime. The more things change, the more nothing changes in Cuba. She, Ross Lettinen, the lady I just quoted, is a daughter 
of Cuban exiles living in the United States. She chaired the House Foreign Affairs Committee for two years. I'd love to hear from Cubans listening right now if you have mm-hmm. any out there. Yeah. We did not help the Cuban people get freer today for this by this deal, she said. The policy change is a gift for the Cuban government that has done nothing to provide basic, fundamental human rights to the Cuban people. That is a statement from Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley, a member of the Senate Budget Committee. This decision rewards a brutal regime without any significant commitment toward change for the oppressed Cuban people. Mm. Uh, In a televised speech, President Obama said that the change involved 18 months of secret negotiations facilitated by the Vatican and Canada. He called the nation's policy of isolating Cuba rigid and outdated and said it had not been effective in achieving change on the communist-run island. Uh, A quote from the president here, uh, quote, we will end an outdated approach that for decades has failed to advance our interests, and instead we will begin to normalize relations between our two countries. The president continued to say, quote, through these changes, we intend to create more opportunities for the American and Cuban people and begin a new chapter among the nations of the Americas. President Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro agreed to the change on Tuesday, which included a prisoner exchange and the opening of embassies in both countries. So under the deal, if you didn't already know, 65-year-old Alan Gross, didn't he threaten to commit suicide? Yeah. Was released to the United States yesterday after five years of captivity in Havana in exchange for three Cubans who had been convicted as spies. Now, that part I did not hear. I just thought they let him go. I oh, really? didn't realize it was a prisoner exchange. Gross was arrested December 3rd, 2009, and sentenced to 15 years in prison. He was charged with importing banned technology and trying to establish clandestine internet service for Cuban Jews. Mm. He had been working as a subcontractor for the U.S. Agency for International Development. He obviously is joyful about being reunited with his family, the president told ABC News. Uh, The president added, I don't have any current plans to visit Cuba. Let's see how things evolve. No, of course not. (laughs) Uh, I I do want to take phone calls, and I see the phone is ringing, so let me do that. And and, uh, if I have time, I will read some of the quotes from some of our elected officials in this state. The governor, uh, Senator Marco Rubio, Senator... um, Oh, Bill Nelson. God. Bill Nelson, thank you. You're welcome. And some others. And Governor Scott. Governor Scott, yeah. Good, if I didn't say. Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for calling. Good morning. Cuba will never be free unless we lift that embargo that has not worked for all these years. And you're not going to hear me say this many times, but I support President Obama's decision on this, and I think it didn't go far enough. I think we need to throw the door wide open to Cuba and... I think it would be like the Berlin Wall coming down, and I think the Cuban people would finally have a chance to be free. They have no chance now. They might have a chance if we, if we lower this barrier. And I don't have the insight that Senator Rubio and these other people do that are, you know, have family from Cuba, but I do understand that history is dynamic. You can't predict what's going to happen after an event. If, if Cuba's opened up, it, it could be a whole new world for Cuba, or maybe, maybe it won't, but let's give it a chance because... The embargo definitely has not worked. Thank you, Larry. Good point. Yeah, excellent point. Yeah, that's a good point. point. That's a good point. Uh, I guess the main thing that the governor was upset about was the exchange of the prisoners, the uh, the three Cubans who had been convicted as spies. Yeah, yeah, I would be upset about Um, that, uh, But it's not unusual, I I guess, to... uh, I'm more concerned about chikungunya, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, I'm scratching now. I just, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, every chikungunya. little thing now. Yeah. Chikungunya. chikungunya. Well, you know what you got to get? You got to get that stuff from uh, Avon. What's it called again? Skin, Skin so soft. Yeah, that's, they say that works. Yep. Really. All right, so let me read you what the, uh, the our officials said. Let's see, Marco Rubio. I'll do him first. Okay. Marco Rubio, Senator Marco Rubio, issued the statement... Today's announcement initiating a dramatic change in U.S. policy toward Cuba is just the latest in a long line of failed attempts by President Obama to appease rogue regimes at all costs. Like all Americans, I rejoice at the fact that Alan Gross will be able to return to his family after five years in captivity. 
Okay, I'm looking at the clock. Hold on, I gotta take a little break. We'll be right back. Your calls. I invite your calls. Call in. I'd love to hear from you. We'll be right back. Where's the thing? Where's the? Oh, that's right. They didn't give me a weather this morning. Oh, that's right. We'll jump straight to the commercial, and then we'll be back. Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. right here on the Source WOCA. Don't miss planning for a better and safer retirement with your hosts, Francois Cousinet and Julianne Cousinet. They'll be giving you information about your retirement funds and answering your questions with live call in. So don't miss it Saturdays from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m. Planning for a better and safer retirement right here on the Source WOCA 96.3 FM, 1370 a.m. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. The five reasons you should shop at Honey Baked Ham this Christmas. One, handcrafted, not mass-produced. No one can resist sweet, crunchy glazed ham. Two, homestyle sides that are as tempting as they are easy. Three, honey baked desserts, sweet, yummy, and oh so good. Four, holiday platters for easy entertaining for family or friends or employees. Five, gourmet condiments to treat anybody's taste buds. So why choose anything else? I can't think of a single reason. Honey Baked Ham, the world's best ham. So get ready to pass your plate. Happy, Happy holidays, holidays from, from Honey, honey baked, baked Ham. Ham. Located right behind Best Buy, 861-0011. Think unique gifts are hard to find? If so, you haven't been to Downtown Jewelry and Pawn in Bellevue. Frank has something for everyone. Antiques, costume jewelry, diamonds, gold, watches, fine china, art deco pieces, and so much more. Located at 5445 Southeast 111th Street in Bellevue, behind Checkers, a trip to Frank's Downtown Jewelry and Pawn is a must. A little elf told me that the big guy shops there. You should too. And Frank does great repairs. This is Austin Tavern reminding you to stay in contact with us at WOCA. Find us on Twitter and Instagram at Voice of Ocala. Make sure to become a friend of our Facebook page and call us at 622-9622. All right, 12 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. If you want to comment on the, the, the change in Cuba's relationship with the United States, I encourage you to call in right now. If you call in in 10 minutes, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to have to say I'm, I'm out of time. So I won't say much more. I just want to hear from you. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, guys. Hey, how you doing, Hugh? Pretty good, thank you. Uh, boy, let me tell you right now, uh, with the opening up of tourism, the cruise line ships and everything else going down there, that's going to really boom that, that society and help those people out quite a bit. Just that one facet alone, because look what tourism has done to Florida and everywhere else in the world. So that's going to be a big, big deal. And uh, I've... I'm agreement with your first caller there. About, uh, I'm, uh, uh, thank God for uh, doing what he's doing. Uh, he finally made a decision that I really appreciate, and I, I, I hope it's it's going to be successful. And I think it's. I'm kind of looking for maybe going to Cuba myself on a vacation. <laughs> I, I think the travel restrictions haven't changed, but they're expected to change. And the and the embargo, I believe, is still in effect. Congress has to actually agree to the embargo. That. Yeah, I think. According to a program on uh, TV last night, is that uh, the uh, travel restrictions will probably be the next or one of the first things to uh, be lifted, and okay. uh, I think that's probably one of the major things. Okay. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Hugh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind going. I'll be. I'd yeah. Cool, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be pretty down Seems there. Seems like uh, un uncharted territory for me. Well, the whole <laughs> world is uncharted territory for me. <laughs> good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Larry and Robin. It's Mark calling. Hey, Mark. Hey, guys. Uh, I served at the American Embassy in Honduras and uh, the one in Buenos Aires, Argentina, as a young Marine. And uh, one thing I noticed about Latin American countries is they never seem to invade or attack each other. So I think uh, w with that in mind, you see the Latin, the Latin culture is actually uh, quite, a, quite a primarily peaceful people. And I think reaching out uh, is a positive overture. Uh, um, I shook John Kennedy's hand, so I've, uh, and I've lived in Miami. I, I have a much respect for the Cuban people. I think the uh, 
the younger Cubans. I think the people that are under 40 years old uh, have that came to the United States see that our country, um, they have witnessed our own country not uh, be as successful as they thought, thought that it would be, which at one point we were all heading in a similar direction. I think we've kind of plateaued out. So I think reaching out is a positive thing. I would agree with the other two callers. And I would also just share from an intelligence standpoint the uh, – uh, they don't say who it is, but the, the gentleman that they released yesterday, Reed or whatever his last name was, there was also another American agent uh, who they don't identify. So there are things that happen um, on both sides that we're not aware of. And uh, and I'm not saying that you know, shouldn't be, should be kept from the people, but I support the decision. And not all Republicans uh, do uh, deny the uh, connection. Uh, Jeff Flake from Arizona stood with the president yesterday, and I think... Uh, Republicans have been associated with the uh, Chamber of Commerce politically in the country and all about business and to heck with everything else. And I'm not being critical. My point is it, it would be good, obviously, from a business perspective. So when on Facebook they call us Democrats, communists, or socialists, that's not actually true. We just care about children and old people and profits. So um, maybe just in that order. Maybe the order is different for other people. But So I think this decision reflects uh, America's uh, will in the Cold War. Uh, was prob- prob- primarily financed by Americans, uh, unbeknownst to our citizens. But have a great morning. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that. Uh, the phone line is open if you want to call. The number is 622-9622. I'd love to hear what you have to say if you are Cuban-American or have relatives who are. Any any opinions from from those folks? I haven't heard from them yet, not mm-hmm. personally. I do have a statement from uh, our lieutenant governor, the Florida lieutenant governor, who is Cuban-American, Carlos Lopez Cantera said, as a Cuban-American, I am disappointed by today's actions from the Obama administration, which sets a dangerous precedent for rogue nations who know they can take American hostages at will. So our lieutenant governor is not too happy with this, and he's a Cuban-American. He did say, I am relieved for Alan Gross and his family. However, Cuba has a brutal dictatorship, and the Obama administration's actions only legitimize, I'm sorry, legitimize their oppressive behavior and make it harder for the people of Cuba who are fighting for democracy. Mm, now that's a great perspective. It's hard to know. I mean, you know, you got there's something to be said about you know we've been doing this for a long time now, 50 years, and has has their life changed at all? We're just waiting for Castro to die. And now Raúl takes over, and he's got a little bit more health than yeah than Fidel. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. This is a, uh, this is not, well, I think for goodwill between the United States and Cuba, President Obama should go over there with his wife and with his children to show the goodwill that that, that, that will be the next step by opening up uh, the ability for people to travel to Cuba. I just so might. I he, just, he should go there with his whole family to show goodwill. I hope I don't disappoint anybody with what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. It's a heavy, heavy statement, I got I to gotta tell you. Okay. I just might smoke a cigar. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I know I quit. Yeah. <laughs> and aren't, aren't they illegal right now? The cigars? Cuban, Cuban cigars. Aren't they illegal? I'm, I'm not sure. Don't, but this don't was, they make it in Tampa, though? The one that's left. a Tampa cigar. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's an Ebor City cigar. <laughs> that's right. I, I don't know. I just Cuban might. Just to, just to see if it's really what they say it is. They say it's the best. All right. Yeah. Let me stop talking. I promised I wouldn't talk. Good morning. You're on the air. Larry, it's Mark calling back. Yeah. Um, I think you're right on the cigars, and, but uh, as a friend, I would hope you would only just have the one. Um, but it would, I think they're considered the best. I, I don't don't smoke, never have. But I just, just wanted to say, um, I want to make a comment about uh, Cuba, but I've lost, lost my point I'm in traffic, so I apologize. That's no, okay. Anyway, okay. I think it's a great, a great decision. Oh, uh, most Americans that do get to Cuba, they... Uh, uh, without any issues, what they do is they go to Mexico, by the way, and you can take a ferry across from the Yucatan Peninsula, or you can fly over. And uh, all the Cubans did uh, would just staple your visa statement to your to your passport. So therefore, there would be not a stamp on your passport. Just be a piece of paper, and then you remove the piece of paper, so there's no <laughs> evidence okay. that you're ever there. So that's, oh, yeah, how yeah. That, that's how that operated, even recently, by the way. Okay. Okay. Well, so so now, I mean, the way I understand it right now, if a Cuban gets on a raft and floats the 90 miles and, and is able to set foot on American soil, mm-hmm. then they're automatically allowed to be in the country, right? Isn't that the, yeah. the crazy rule? Yeah, you have to. However, if a Mexican comes across the border and steps foot on American soil, we, we send them back. Yes. Is that the way? It is? So now yes. if we've, 
if we've uh, n- you know changed our relationship with Cuba, would that change? Would mm-hmm. would somebody floating across the ninety miles? <laughs> Sorry, we can send you back. <laughs> I always thought that was crazy. Remember that story down in uh, the in uh, in the Keys. Mm-hmm. What, what do you call the things that hold the bridge up? Pilings? Yes. Pilings? Remember there was a, mm-hmm. a guy standing on a piling? Yeah. And they were trying to decide, is he on land or not? Yeah. Is he on land? I think they decided he was on land, and so they allowed him to stay. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. All right, we've got five minutes if you want to talk about this. I honestly... I'm... What does Governor Scott say? Does he... Oh, I, I do have the governor's thing, yeah. Okay, let me tell you what he said. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know what I think about this one. I like the perspective from the lieutenant governor, though. You have both perspectives. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like being very influenced by everybody else. I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. I mean, is it good? Is it bad? I think it's good. They, they, you you got to try. You have to try, but the president and his whole family has to go over there to show goodwill. But the governor, our governor, Governor Scott said, today's release of Alan Gross from Cuban prison is long overdue, and I am relieved and pleased for him and his family. However, it is unconscionable. Is that the word, Robert? Unconscionable. Mm-hmm. For President Obama to hand over spies responsible for the murder of two U.S. citizens, especially since Mr. Gross should have never been incarcerated. Oh, time and go. time again, the Castro regime has chosen violence and suppression over freedom and democracy, and the Obama administration's actions of appeasement to dictators diminish the United States' role of being a beacon for democracy. As long as Cuba chooses dictatorship over democracy, I will continue to support the embargo and sanctions against them. This is still the governor. President Obama is giving in to a tyrannical government that does not value human rights and completely disregards the people of Cuba who are fighting for democracy. Ultimately, I guess that's what those who are against it are really kind of using as... Mm -hmm their ace is is that the people of cuba themselves will not benefit from this yeah good morning but, but pete made a good point why don't we wait and see uh 50 years hasn't changed him either so good morning you're on the air yeah this is pete calling back yeah i i hear the same thing from from these republicans and you know i'm a conservative but they say we you know we can't deal with this dictatorial regime uh i'm just going to throw out two names saudi arabia and china <laughs> we do a lot of business with them, and I don't hear anybody <clears throat> crying their eyes out over the, the way those people are oppressed in those countries. The only way we can stop the oppression in Cuba, and I, I don't want to repeat myself, but the only way we can stop it is to try to open that country up. And I just want to remind everybody what I said before. A lot of people are too young to remember when the Berlin Wall fell down. And everybody thought, oh, God, the, the, the communists are going to mow the people down in the streets with machine guns, and there's going to be thousands of people are killed. Well, that's not what happened, because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So let's, let's give this a try, and I don't want to make it a Republican issue, but let's not have a, you know, just a Republican attitude that we have to oppose everything the president does. There you go. Thanks, I, I believe that's true. Oh, gosh, I've, mm-hmm. I've said that. It doesn't matter who's been. I've yeah. said that as long as I've been doing radio. Exactly. By the way, we happen to know a lady who was on the east side of that wall. Yes, we in do. Germany, and uh, her life changed so much for the better when that wall came down. Yeah, very interesting. I, I, I would love to, uh, We have had her on, actually, uh, mm-hmm. but she's an artist, so we were mostly talking about her art. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning. Um, I was living in Baltimore, and I had a patient I was taking care of. He owned a sports bar restaurant where a lot of the Baltimore Orioles would come into, and he somehow got Cohibas illegally, you know, to give to some of his... Uh, famous patron. So I said, well, can I try one of those Cohibas? He said, yeah, I'll get you one. And I smoked it, and I'm not a cigar smoker, but <laughs> it didn't impress me. You know, I thought, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be a Cuban cigar. It's probably going to be good. <laughs> but if you're not but a cigar I smoker, think, yeah, I, I think you have to be a cigar smoker in order to appreciate a cigar. Yeah, so I don't think I was a good uh, judge of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I appreciate the cigar. But see, I don't want to take one man's word. See, hey, everybody has their thing, right? I mm-hmm. I watch people eating stuff I will never eat. I'm never going to yeah. eat a crab. There's right. no way. <laughs> I'm never going to eat a crab. I'm never going to eat an oyster. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> if you slip it into the recipe, maybe I will. <laughs> but you won't slip it down your throat from I, the shell. I am not going to do that. <laughs> Some people think it's the best thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> However, even though I quit cigars. Mm-hmm. They say this is the the most 
the greatest cigar on the planet. <laughs> well, you are a cigar aficionado, so we'll have to wait I was. and see. <laughs> All right, we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. That was kind of fun. We'll be right back. Yeah. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. Sony's comedy, The Interview, canceled in the face of threats from hackers. Federal investigators say the hack is linked to North Korea. The movie is a spoof about the assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Some say it's better to be safe than sorry. I suppose when you're getting threats like that and they've already hacked and stuff, I mean, you should probably take it a bit seriously. Moviegoer there. Hackers have threatened 9-11 style attacks on theaters that play the film. Fox Radio's Tanya J. Powers. Sony says it has no future release plans for it. Many actors react acted on social media expressing disappointment in Sony for canceling the release, many saying the hackers won. Boston Marathon bombing suspect Shokar Zarnayev due in federal court today for the first time in nearly a year and a half as a judge holds a final hearing before his trial next month. And one person's dead up to 11 others hurt last night in Redondo Beach, California after being hit by a woman who ran a red light. Fox News, we report, you decide. Fox News on your time. The Fox News iPad app is ready to go with all the great features from foxnews.com and our iPhone app optimized specifically for your iPad. Watch the latest clips from your favorite Fox News shows. Personalize the app by creating your own newscast using the video playlist. Listen to Fox News Radio live. Get local weather forecasts. And it's all free. Go to foxnews2go.mobi. That's foxnews, the number two, go.mobi. Some people would call him a loser. He ran for state office. He was beaten. He started a business. He failed. He ran for Congress. He lost. He was nominated for vice president. He lost again. But he knew only those who never try are the real losers. And Abraham Lincoln was no loser. Persistence. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Yes, it's that time of year again. Christmas Day's at WOCA, and we are in the spirit of giving. What you need to do to win is call us when we ask you to, and we'll put your name in the drawing. Remember, you can only put your name in once. You may win a certificate from Pack Mail, or one from Ocala Utilities, or one from Downtown Jewelry and Pawn of Bellevue, or Dance Alive, or... So listen to put your name in, and listen to win on WOCA The Source. This year, thanks to the efforts of the Bad Gift Givers Anonymous Association for the Givers of Bad Gifts, better known as the BGGA, the ratio of bad gift giving has been drastically reduced since our last commercial. But there is